Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is the morning of May the 2nd, 2024. Let's talk about Ryan Garcia. Let's talk about the positive drug test. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Folks, this changes everything. Understand, uh, many, myself included, were willing to look the other way on a huge violation of boxing protocol, right? It's one thing to miss weight. And understand, boxing has a long list of champions who lost their belts. That's how serious it is for missing weight. And here, Ryan Garcia was more than three pounds above the weight limit. Right, folks? That's an embarrassment to boxing. Right? We all looked the other way because Garcia was going off at long odds, a better than four to one underdog. He got as high as a six to one underdog. Right? So we, of course, thought, oh, wow, you know, this is a great underdog story. But the three pounds was completely unacceptable. Right? We gave him a pass we would not give Devin Haney. If Haney, the champion, came in three pounds overweight, hell, if he came in one pound overweight and couldn't lose that pound, he would have been stripped of his title. Now, to make matters worse here, and Garcia looked great in the fight. But to make matters worse, now comes word that Garcia was busted with Osterine in his system. Right, folks? This is not caffeine. This is not taking too many aspirin. This is a third base, my words, what I call a third base performance enhancing drug. In other words, the only way it could get in your system is if you intended to take the PED or if someone slipped you the PED without your knowledge. What I'm going to do here is just read a portion from bscg.org. Again, that's bscg.org. This is a database here online where they talk about performance enhancing drugs. I like to go to it when an athlete is busted with a performance enhancing drug so I can figure out if they could have gotten it from tainted meat, if they could have gotten it accidentally, if there's some over-the-counter standard medication that they might have taken uh, that could have led to a positive drug test. I'm just going to read some portions here of this drug, Osterine, right, or Osterine. And I'll leave it up to you to decide how high-powered this PED is, right? how this PED came to be created. Was it organic? Is this in nature? Or is this something that came out of a lab? I also want you to just pause for a second and ask yourself the question, how hard would this PED be to get? Right? So from BSCG, let me just read and paraphrase some of what they have here online. The drug Osterin, also known as MK-2866, GTX-024, is a selective androgen receptor modulator. It was developed in the mid-2000s to help combat bone and muscle wasting in people suffering from a range of debilitating diseases and aging.
but is still being clinically researched and is not yet an approved drug. Osterin is designed to activate the androgen receptor in a similar fashion to anabolic steroids. Because it produces strength gains similar to those of anabolic steroids without unpopular androgenic side effects, the drug has become a prevalent steroid alternative for bodybuilders and athletes. Folks, this is one of two drugs that showed up in the A side of Ryan Garcia's tests. Right? The other is a drug called norandrosterone. Right? I would argue that these are sophisticated drugs that hint at a drug regimen. Right? I don't get this drug in my system from drinking coffee. Now we're going to hear the cover story because understand when someone is busted for taking a serious PED they typically have a prepared cover story to explain how it could innocently be in their system. Now, Ryan Garcia has already released a statement saying that he has never taken a PED. That's not him, that he won the fight on the merits. Right? Over the next few days, and I'm a skeptic on things like this, over the next few days, I'm expecting another story to emerge. You know, I had a sore throat. I took this cough medicine. Right? I um, was looking to gain weight. I took this supplement. That's the word that's always used, right? This weight gaining supplement. And I had no idea what Osterin was. I had no idea that it was a banned substance. How could I, since I agreed to drug testing? You're going to hear some innocent explanation. Just understand that Ryan Garcia's victory over Devin Haney is going to be expunged. Haney is going to be returned to his status as an unbeaten fighter. This fight is going to be a footnote. You might even hear that the casino that paid Haney over $10 million, right? Haney's supposed to, at 6-1, to one, have placed a bet of something like $2 million on himself. The casino might be contacting Haney to get the money back, right? You're going to have fallout. Understand, it's not going to end well. Boxing is regulated. There are things called boxing commissions. They're going to want answers to tough questions, right? The answers might not be convincing because of the high-level sophistication of a drug that did not exist in the year 2000, right? So this is extremely disappointing. Just understand that it devalues everything, right? Before... The film of the fight was really singular. You know, it was the kind of film where five, six, seven, ten, fifteen 10, 15 years from now, we could say, hey, I remember that night. Right? It was a prime example of an underdog, a significant underdog, beating the odds, proving all of us wrong. Right? Three knockdowns in the fight. You know, think about, too, the narratives that were being created, right? One of them was, can Devin Haney take a punch? Right? Jury's still out on whether Devin Haney can take an honest punch. We know he can't take a juiced punch, right? So, you know, let me also point out, too, that there are many reputations on the line here. Many. 
right? I'm not going to mention the guy's name because he deserves some anonymity right now. But understand, Ryan Garcia has a world-class trainer, right? That world-class trainer has his own reputation in boxing. You have people who are going to have to defend their reputations, who over the next few days are going to have to go on record and are going to have to say things like, look, we didn't know anything about this. You know, I was working with him. He has his own team. He has his own nutritionist. Um, that's not something that, you know, we're involved in. You're going to have a lot of people saving face. Also, his promotional group. And here again, I'm not going to name them because they may have done nothing wrong. His promotional group is one of the foremost promotional groups in all of boxing. Right? They can't be involved in any kind of storyline that would hint at them encouraging any fighter fighting under their banner to do anything wrong. It's really interesting, too, because, of course, you have a feud right now between one of the promoters and a starfighter who's not involved in this, but who has his own clenbuterol past, right? And the two guys are arguing, and it's interesting publicity for an upcoming fight between this fighter and an unbeaten challenger. Right now, of course, the focus is going to shift a little bit away from that fight toward the promoter's fighter, Ryan Garcia. Right? So let's just hope that there's some innocent explanation or that the B sample comes back negative. I can tell you, though, from following the sport for a long time and from following blown drug tests, that the B sample rarely, rarely ever comes back negative after the A sample has come back positive. Right? Let me just say, too, Connor Ben is having all kinds of problems with some sanctioning bodies, some regulatory bodies in the United Kingdom. Right, folks? A positive test like this for a drug like this could literally pause your career for years, right? I encourage people to look at the chronology of Gerald Miller's career, right? I encourage people to look at the chronology of Dillian White's career, right? White was extremely fortunate that there was a procedural abnormality during a drug test, right? The press will say, oh, White has gotten past this. But if you do your own research, you'll find out that the ability to get past the drug test doesn't necessarily mean that there weren't things in the test sample that should not have been there. Right? Ryan Garcia could well go from a fighter on the verge of fighting huge names to a fighter whose career is on pause for multiple years. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. What I've also found, too, is that the explanations are always ridiculous. In 1988, one of the best athletic performances I have seen in my life. It was the men's 100 meters. The sprinter's name was Ben Johnson. Johnson was always great out of the blocks if you're in a track and field. But this was that rare race where Johnson started strong and he finished strong. Johnson set the world record, which was huge, at an Olympic Games, one of the most watched 
events in track and field. Then, of course, Johnson failed a drug test. We forget it now, but at the time, Johnson claimed that he was drinking water and that there was some sticky substance at the bottom of the bottle. That was his initial story. Then we found out later that Johnson was on a regimen. Right? Just brace yourself for some ridiculous story involving some over-the-counter medication or some inadvertent taking of osterine, a drug that did not exist in the year 2000. Those are my thoughts. I look forward to yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.